Hello everyone welcome to the video and today we're going to be talking about a full in-depth ash guide for the highest level of players. So a little bit about me is I have grinded 500 kills in the first day and was temporarily the number one ash. So I do know a little bit about her and I've practiced her a lot and I feel like I've got her down to a science at this point. And also I've, I've been apex predator a lot so I do believe I've, I can offer some valuable tips if you want to master ash. So before we get into the video I would like to ask you guys to not only drop us up here but to follow me on twitch it would help me out a lot and I would really really appreciate it. So the first thing I want to talk about is ash's passive. So ash's passive allows you to see anyone who died in the last three minutes and their death box will be revealed on the map. So you could also ping this and look around and also she has another part of her passive where you're able to basically mark a box if you pull up on a box you can see who killed that person and if they are still alive you can see the exact location of their entire team so it's very valuable for knowing exactly where people are and gathering information on teams you can third party very easily because you know where a lot of players are you know where people are fighting at and you can go there very easily so the next thing is her tactical and this is the arc snare and this will tether people in place it's much like an arc star but also it doesn't do as much damage and it just locks people in place kind of similar to a horizontal but it only tethers one person and it is very very strong and then obviously last but not least we have her phase breach which is a one-sided portal and it is very very effective at repositioning and moving your team from different places so i want to go a little bit in more in depth with each of these but we're going to start off with the passive so obviously the passive like i said it's very very effective for third parties and gathering information this is going to be one of your best tools if you know how to use it and know how to gather that information and actually apply it so that's the first tip i have for you guys is to actually apply the information you gather from the passive because it will actually save your life if you know exactly where all the teams are you know whether or not you could third party safely whereas it's not a perfect indication of where every single team is because some people might not be fighting and they are still there however you will know where the general location of a lot of teams are and where each team is positioned on the map so another tip I have for you guys is to look at the kill feed. So as you see the names coming down and you see players dying, I just want you guys to open up your map and see exactly where they died. Sometimes it could be a little bit difficult, but if you look at your mini map, one will pop up and then you can know exactly what I, what I usually do is I will point my player indicator, like the little icon or wherever I'm looking, I will point in that direction of where the death box popped up. And then I will basically make a straight line from the map so that I can find it and know exactly where it is. That's a pretty easy way I've found where I am able to find the death boxes pretty quickly because it is important to get it done quickly. But this is very important to just do periodically. As soon as you see a name pop up, just try to get in the habit of looking exactly where they died because you'll get a better indication of where each team is fighting and where the other players in the game are. So the next part of her passive is obviously when you mark the boxes. And this is important if you pull up on a third party and then you see maybe the boxes, they were there 70 seconds ago, but the players are nowhere to be found. Basically, you walk up to the death boxes that were made by the other players and you mark them and then you will be able to see where the team is. So when you pull up on a third party and that team is nowhere to be found, you could still find them very easily with her other part of her passive. So the next part of Ash's kit is her tactical, which is like I said before, the arc snare. And this is one of her best parts of her kit in my opinion it's very very underrated i feel like a lot of people know her just for the portal or the uh the passive but i feel like this is a very overlooked part of her kit because it could literally stop people from hitting jump pads it could stop them from hitting the gravity cannons it's very very effective and it has so many uses so the first use i want to talk about is using it for people that are hiding behind cover it's very very good if you know that someone's healing behind cover you can tether them basically by throwing it on the edge of the cover where you know they're behind and if they're behind a rock or a box or a crate or anything literally any object if you just throw it on the corner of the object and behind it kind of where they're standing it will tether them in place and they will not be able to move from behind the cover so you could push pretty freely and as well as their movement will be restricted because they cannot get out of it unless they are someone like horizon and they could lift up directly out of it but basically it tethers them completely in place even if they use an octane jump pad they will not be able to get out of it as well as a pathfinder grapple it will completely pull them back and they will not move very far so it's very effective at just stopping people from getting out of a uh, certain area. So you could basically lock them down behind that cover that they decided to go behind. And then you could push for free because they will not be able to leave. So another use of Ash's tactical is to zone out enemies. So what I mean by this is basically if I'm taking a gravity cannon and I know that someone's chasing me, I will put it directly on the ground where I landed because they will land there obviously as well. And I will be able to get a little bit more distance because they will be stuck in place. So a lot of times I will throw these at doorways or certain areas if I'm trying to run away and heal. I will just throw it down in a doorway and stop people from coming through. It's really good at stopping people because a lot of people don't want to be snared. They don't want to step in it. So it gives you a little bit of extra time if you want to hit that battery or if you want to hit a cell or two. And it could literally change the course of a fight because you can get an entire heal off by zoning off a door or an area in general. So another tip for the tactical is the usefulness of them on gravity cannons. 
and not just when you're taking off on gravity cannons but also when you're landing so basically if you're landing and someone's chasing you uh if you throw it directly where you landed and they land like i said before you can fry them pretty easily as well as if you are landing yourself and you are landing on an entire team a lot of times i will try to tether them in place as well by throwing it right before i land and that way i can kind of you know lock them in place just as well as i'm going to be locked in place so another small tip I have for you guys, and this is pretty insignificant, but it might help you if you are as annoyed about the Prowlers as I am, but basically if you were being chased by Prowlers, which obviously if you've played Season 11, you've been chased by Prowlers because they're incredibly annoying, you can throw it right at your feet and it will tether the one closest to you and you can continue running. So this is very useful in my opinion because I don't want to get hit by the Prowlers and if they're chasing me and I'm just trying to get through the area and I hear one right behind me, I will just throw it at my feet, it will tether the Prowler and I will just continue moving. And it has actually saved me from getting hit a couple times, so I do believe that it is a solid tip and you guys should actually try it. So last but not least, we have Ash's ult, and her ult is probably one of the best parts of her kit. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's better than her passive, but there are so many uses that you can get from her ultimate. And one of the best ones is positioning and changing positions. So basically, a lot of times I will push somebody, and she's like an expert flanker. She's one of the best characters at flanking. She's literally a better wraith. So you're able to flank behind somebody instantly. So a lot of times what I'll use her, her ultimate for is creating a portal and going directly behind somebody, whether it's behind a rock or on high ground. But one thing you always want to make sure you're doing is wherever you put that portal, you want to make sure that you're, you're putting the end point behind cover or in a safe spot you really don't want to be portaling directly on a team unless they are weak and they have a down player maybe and then that way you can both stack the portal and do it pretty safely since that player is going to die regardless but basically you never just want to portal directly onto a team it is a very very bad mistake that you're going to be making and overall you just want to try to get to a safer spot so it's all about repositioning but getting in an advantageous position so a lot of times i will portal directly behind the enemy creating a dilemma where they are stuck between two players one obviously being behind cover or having high ground and then one in the initial spot so a lot of times this will create angles for either myself or my teammate and we're able to disassemble a team incredibly easily so if you use her like this you will see so much success because she is in my opinion probably the best flanker legend in the entire game so a lot of times like i said just kind of portal behind them portal on high ground or to cover or to get a different angle or position and it is very effective so the next thing i want to talk about is also with positioning but just repositioning from a bad position so a lot of times in this game you'll be taking a fight from a bad position it's just how the game goes and sometimes your positioning is not always there so if you feel like you're in a position where the enemy has high ground and they're going to be able to beam you pretty easily you just want to make sure that you're you're phasing out of there because you want to get to a better position immediately it's going to save your life so many times so just use it for this as well and try to practice on being able to understand when you're in a bad position and knowing where a good position is because you will be able to teleport there instantly so the next tactic for using her portal is obviously using it to revive down teammates so basically you're able to save a down teammate if you go right next to them and then portal them to a different location you're basically in a dilemma where if they take the portal you're able to get a free beam on one as well as you if they don't take the portal you can get the res so you just want to kind of put the enemy in a position where they have to choose if they stack the portal you're kind of dead but you know it's it's a really good chance at survival because if you're able to portal your teammate out a lot of times they're not even going to chase you through it so you'll be able to get that revive off pretty easily and it is a very effective way of resetting so the next tip i have for you guys is to use it if you are being third partied so this is a very common thing on this map and just in apex in general so obviously if you're being third partied you just want to maybe get out of there and you want to reposition so obviously if you guys are low you can reposition to a better position behind a rock or behind cover or anything and you could heal up behind there if they take it they're pretty much dead because you have two people staring at the entrance of the portal and if they come through they're getting one clipped easily and this is a very effective way at slowing down or stopping third parties completely so the next tip I have for you guys is to use it to contest high ground. So in this map, there are a lot of buildings and structures where the high ground is, is very overwhelming sometimes. And if you just get a unique angle and go from a place that they're not going to expect it, you can portal directly on the high ground and just push them like that because sometimes some of the some of the high grounds in like barometer and an antenna could be pretty obnoxious especially if someone has things like a triple take they're going to be able to, to to damage you pretty easily and stop you from pushing very easily and her ultimate is perfect for this because you can just go up behind them or to the left or to right or wherever they're not looking you can go there and portal up and you'll be able to get up there very safely and be able to fry them on an even playing field since you will be up there with them 
So the last tip I have you guys for her portal is to use it aggressively, but don't use it stupidly. So like I said before, you never want to portal directly on a team, but use cover. So basically you can use this very aggressively if you just portal right next to them, but portal behind a rock. You know, if they're right next to a rock, just portal behind it. Just be right, you can be right next to them this way. You could take the rock and just kind of use it as a head glitch or any cover at all. You could portal directly on top of somebody without actually being on top of them. So that's pretty much it for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.